popular with Marvel fans, but it's even more popular inside Marvel Studios. Let's take a couple minutes to talk about how close the classic series came to becoming part of the secret timeline, whose idea it was, and how the future of the show, well, could definitely influence larger events. Let's break it down. Now before we do that though, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell for all the updates. We do daily Marvel and DC videos, and we want to be your place for all the superhero news, but we're going to bring it to you truthfully and transparently, so you are in the know. Well, ever since X-Men 97 has dropped, while the tone on Marvel Studios has been a bit different. Now to be fair, ever since Avengers Endgame concluded the Infinity Saga, Marvel has exploded with their expansion and stretched out not only into more terrestrial series like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but deep ties into the multiverse. Now, in this era of multiverse stories, Marvel started to develop this new X-Men 97 series, and getting an animated series into crossovers could be a bit tricky. To be fair, Captain Carter did appear in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and what if? So Marvel has figured out how to pull it off, and this leads to many questions on whether the X-Men 97 characters could somehow show up in the greater MCU. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting, because apparently the show was almost integrated into the MCU sacred timeline. Now, recently, during some interviews with Inverse, some of the directors of the new animated series strongly hinted that Marvel Studios considered making the show canon and inserting it directly into Marvel's history. During the interview, director Emi Yanomura said, That has always been something we know was on Kevin Feige's mind. Do we make this part of the MCU? Do we not make this part of the MCU? It's actually gone back and forth quite a few times, and I think we did land in a smart place, because X-Men the Animated Series was its own thing, and I think to continue it we needed to be our own thing. Now, this was followed up by director Jay Costanera, who said, We're getting the X-Men in this format, and we're doing it justice not just by ourselves, but also other fans as well. And we started to get a resurgence of the X-Men in film again. I love that, and I think it's great we have different things. Let them be different. Now, I find this hugely interesting because it appears Kevin Feige was the one who was basically at the spearhead of considering that this show could be part of the great or MCU. Quite honestly, Marvel Studios could possibly reveal the X-Men existed on Earth-616 in the 90s, precisely where the show is set, but also consider the possibility that X-Men 97 could also be set in that same world that was revealed at the end of the Marvels. Now, in any case, it does speak to how much Kevin Feige loves the show, how much the show is respected internally, and where on the radar for the future the show sits. It also gives you some big clues on what Marvel is going to take in consideration when developing their own X-Men series. And quite honestly, if they lean on X-Men 97 and the original cartoon as somewhat of a basis on how to do it right, I think they are on the perfect path. Now, so far we've gotten six excellent episodes of X-Men 97. I'm not sure how Marvel could possibly integrate the animated show into the primary MCU or who would even take up those roles, but I have to say I think Marvel is on the right path here and the fan response is only going to drive more consideration. Obviously, the X-Men play a huge part in the future of the MCU. They're going to be their staple franchise standing right next to the Avengers in the very near future, and it sounds like the love on the other side of the camera is absolutely plentiful, and the teams working on these projects, well, since X-Men 97 is so good, I think they're going to get it right, but we're going to have to wait and see.